Attention school believers, are you ready to get across the start line and launch your dream business? Then you don't want to miss the second half of my live talk on YouTube and Facebook. I reveal the last two runners of the Entrepreneur Olympics. What's the Entrepreneur Olympics, you ask? Good question. This story will help you discover secrets, strategies, and stories that will motivate you to take action and achieve your goals. But hurry, March 12th is right around the corner. This live talk is happening March 12th, and you won't want to miss it. Go to the show notes now and click on Start Line Part 1 to catch up on the first half of the talk. And then join me on YouTube and Facebook for the thrilling conclusion. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. This is DJ Scoob signing off. See you at the start line. <laughs> this is an Undiscovered Legacy production. Undiscovered Entrepreneur, episode number 67. I'm feeling great like I'm in heaven when I'm listening to episode 67. <laughs> We take the advice from everybody around us and especially if it's validating when our brain wants to be like comfortable. If we're doing something new and we're doing something scary, the second someone tells us what we know, what our old routine was like, we're automatically going to be like, yes, I need to go back to that because this person is saying that. What I've really pushed for the imposter syndrome is to find people that are in the same space or find people with the same idea, same journey and same thoughts and the same mindset that I have now or that I want to have. To the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, the podcast where brand new entrepreneurs come to life and could quite possibly be discovered. Join me, DJ Scoob, and the rest of the Scoob Believers as we help these new businesses become a reality. And now, away we go! Hello, Scoob Believers! And welcome to episode number 67 of The Undiscovered Entrepreneur. And it's me, DJ Scoob. <laughs> Coming at you at whatever device you happen to be listening on. Okay, so first we're going to talk about the Scoob Believer of the Week. And the Scoob Believer of the Week is Raphael Morn. Now, Raphael is the host of the Geeky Dad podcast. And we put together a place on X or Twitter or whatever you're calling it right now. Uh, for a bunch of podcasters to get together, and Raphael actually came up with the name of that podcast group. So thank you, Raphael. If you'd like to see anything about the Geeky Dad podcast, look into the show notes where we'll have all his information and a link to his podcast. So today, our brand new entrepreneur is Fiona Redden. Now, Fiona Redden is a holistic life coach that uses essential oils for self-care. You're going to see or hear a lot about self-care and how we can take care of ourselves and I do make this point in the podcast, but I'm going to make it here for you too. If you can't take care of yourself, how do we expect to take care of other people? So we're going to learn a lot about that. So let's take a listen to Fiona Redden. Salutation, school believers, and we are here again with another amazing brand spanking new entrepreneur. So you are here with Fiona. Hi, Fiona. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very excited to be here today. That's right. So I'm very interested. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and talk to us on the Undiscovered Entrepreneur. We really appreciate you. Well, that's really good. I appreciate being invited. It's very interesting. I know we spoke a little bit a couple of weeks ago, and I thought it was very I was interested Went and checked out your podcast, so it was pretty cool. Oh, I really appreciate that. <laughs> but I do have one kind of semi-serious question to ask you. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Are you a school believer? Yes, absolutely. All it's right. It's been really good, very inspiring. <laughs> oh, boy, that's awesome. Thank you so much for being a school believer, Fiona. I really appreciate you. All right, so if you could just do me a favor, Fiona, and just give me a little bit about who you are, what your entrepreneur adventure is, and how long you've been doing it for. Yeah, I am. I've self-love coach, but I teach it as an actionable skill instead. So I just recently started to launch into my coaching program. 
Uh, I also do doTERRA essential oils. I did a lot of coaching and a lot of supporting and teaching with that to be able to help people with a more holistic well-being and lifestyle. And I've also been a manager for over 20 years. So I've got a lot of experience with supporting teams and being able to work with different styles of people and different personalities. So I'm taking all that experience to put into the self-love coaching. I used to struggle with the self-love and I learned a lot and I started to really appreciate and value how much it is and then understanding how it's like the center of a lot of stuff. So I got really excited to be able to share that with other people. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, self-love and self-care, really super important, even in an entrepreneur adventure, because if we're not taking care of ourselves, how are we going to be able to take care of somebody else or understand their problems and their own needs and things like that if we're not taking care of our own? Yeah, and I find to a society, just a lot of what everybody thought 20 to 30 years ago is so different now. And those principles and the way our mentality was can't apply anymore. So I really like how a lot of people are transitioning and changing and they're recognizing the importance of self-love and self-care and that it's not selfish and indul indulgent or anything like that. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah, exactly. And that's what a lot of people thought, even in my time, I don't know what your time is, when my time is, I meant to, <laughs> but I know that a lot of us, we always thought self-care was like selfish. Yes, a self-care, I. but you're thinking about yourself and only yourself. But we're learning now more and more, just like I said before, if we're not taking care of ourselves, we don't have that capability or even knowledge to be able to help other people in a very similar way. Definitely. All right. I, I really like to know what kind of got you started in this. What was your first kind of experience getting started? What was that like? As a teenager growing up, I never liked myself. And I always used to joke saying that if I was a person that was not myself and I had to be friends with me, I wouldn't be friends with me. And I kept saying that for years. And then I had one person question me on it and I got upset at him. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, I don't like myself. Why would I want to be friends? And it really got me thinking a little bit, but not enough to make any changes. And then about five years or ago or so I was diagnosed with bipolar and then ADHD. So then I really didn't like myself because I was like, I couldn't trust my brain because it was doing all kinds of funky stuff and being changing moods. And I didn't know what was me, what was that and how to actually behave and everything. So I went through a lot of struggles in a really dark period. I moved about the same time that I was diagnosed. So I was trying to do, just try to take care of myself, be more aware, but I didn't realize how much work it takes to learn to be very self-aware and very be able to regulate yourself but I did start riding horses and doing a lot of riding lessons which I enjoyed and by learning and riding I learned a lot more about being present and being in the moment and how your intention and your energy so it really taught me how to manage my energy because again with bipolar going that big up and down with the moods is very hard to regulate that riding and then I went from riding to volunteering at the ranch and then working with the horses for groundwork. So now any of the horses that have a bit of low self-esteem or they're not very confident or they just a little bit green, then I work with those horses. So now I'm teaching horses to be more confident and to be more secure in their own selves and stuff like that. So I thought it was pretty amazing. And by learning with the horses, using the essential oils to really learn to accept myself, the emotional side of them, I really learned more about self-love. And one of the classes that I taught for essential oils last year was on self-love and I really dug into it a lot more and then I that's again like where I got really excited about it and I learned there's so much to it but then I also noticed that a lot of people look at it as from the passive way so they're like oh like when you're talking to someone it's, it's okay give yourself grace you tried to do the best you could but it's fine if it doesn't work out and I know that's a lot of advice that I hear very often for people and then when I ask them what they think about self-love they just say that oh it's loving yourself being best friends with your with who you are and it took me a while to go from hating myself to being like, okay, I accept myself and I do like myself and I like spending time and I appreciate myself and I like myself. And then to continue moving it forward to loving. But then I also realized there's a huge gap in the fact that, yeah, you could give yourself grace for not accomplishing what you planned on doing and be kind to yourself. But how is that going to help you to accomplish what your goals are? How is that going to hold you accountable? And how is that going to really make you do better and be more disciplined and focused and do more of what your whatever goals you want to succeed in, whether it's business, personal relationships, weight loss, anything, because without that foundation. And I know one of my friends, she talks a lot about self-esteem, but I found self-esteem is more about external validation. So then I really started looking at that, like, why do we need external validations, whether it's 
doing really good in school, whether it's having that great family, having great car houses, or just showing to people what money we've had, how successful we are, when we could really take that and internalize it and validate ourselves for how successful and how we feel accomplished and how good we feel. So then I really started to dig into different aspects of it that people don't normally think about when it comes to self-love. Wow, that's that was amazing. You ripped right through that question. That's so fantastic. And you know, it's amazing to me how animals have that capability of calming us down and we're taking care of them. And, and for, in some of their own way, they take care of us. I have a cat named Bully that doesn't leave me alone, but he always knows. He always knows when I'm having a rough day and he knows he comes over to soothe me and to, to let me pet him and think about and kind of process what's happened for that day. So I see that same thing happening with your horses. You'd go in there mm-hmm. and you'd take care of them. I loved how you transitioned taking care of the horses into taking care of people because that's exactly what you're doing now. Instead of horses, you're taking care of people, but you're thinking about it in the same way where you're taking the people that are having a little bit of a rough time that are a little green, I guess you could say, like you were talking about the horses and pointing them in a direction and helping them find ways to take care of themselves, having, having to find ways to to soothe themselves and that kind of thing. So that's really awesome. I love how you make that transition. Giving yourself grace. You got to give yourself some space to understand that we are human beings. We're going to make mistakes. There's going to be problems. We have to take that with a grain of salt and more than anything, learn from those problems, learn from those mistakes. So when that does come up again, instead of making the same mistake over and over again, we know, oh, here it is. This is here again. But now I know what's going to happen. I know how to take care of this. And I kind of understand the human condition of external validation. But we just like you said, we really have to turn that inward and be okay with ourselves. Yeah, it's nice to have those things, but what do you really have? You have possessions. You have things that are technically costing you more than they're actually making you feel better about yourself because cars cost money. All these other things cost money, and they're all going to go away at one point or another. We can't exactly take them with us. So we really, what we can take with us is our souls, it's ourselves. And that's the one thing we need to work on first. And then if any of the other stuff falls in, that's great, whatever. But thinking about ourselves is more important than anything else. Yeah, especially if we're doing like if we want those things, but we're doing it from a better place as opposed to comparing or trying to compete or have status to prove ourselves and prove our worthiness. If we've already looked internalized and we know our value and we know our worth, then whatever possessions we have is just something we enjoy and what we like. So you're getting it for the right reasons and not just trying to make yourself feel better by having those things. Really, we have to impress ourselves before you have to go out and impress other people. We really need to take care of ourselves first, just like you said. All right. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Getting started, you explained a little bit in your opening statements, but when you were getting started, what were some of the pit problems and problems that you actually had starting your actual entrepreneur business? Um, dealing with a lot of the same similar situations with self-love, like the uh, imposter syndrome, uh, a fear of whether or not people would believe that it's possible and that it's changed. Because especially with self-love, it's just an ongoing journey. There are some days where I know I'm doing really well. And then if I kind of stop doing my self-care a little bit, break out of my routine, it's hard to go back in. Then all of a sudden I'm not taking care of myself the right way. And then a lot of those thoughts come in my head. And then as I was launching and doing my summit last week, Right. Like the week before, I was like, am I, are people really going to listen to me? Or am I really going to help support people? Are the speakers going to get something out of it as well? And so it was a lot of those thoughts and questions that were going in my head too that my inner critics, are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure this is okay to do? So I know I just just like, okay, thank you for your concern. I appreciate it, but I'm going to move forward. I'm going to continue doing it because if it's scary, then I'm going to do better next time and I'm going to continue working forward. And it was a success. It was great. And I was like, okay, let's go for the next one. So I'm already planning for my next one in a couple of months time. And I know it's just going to continue growing and getting better. But I know too that it's easy to slip back sometimes if you let it happen. It is one of those things that it's a constant battle. And if I'm not careful that I could easily think the same thing. So then also when I start thinking of, well, you're not doing yourself love, then how are you going to help other people support to do them? So again, that's where that A little bit of an internal battle keeps going through. So that's a bit of the pitfalls as well. And part of it too, when I didn't like myself and I said, why would I be friends? I struggle a lot with thinking people would choose me. So that again, I know 
a lot of times with businesses, we are our own obstacles and we are our own bottleneck. By thinking and having that energy in me that people aren't going to choose me, right away I'm already stopping my efforts and energy to go forward. It would be different if I was like, oh, I've already had a lot of people that are saying, yes, I want to learn from you. Yes, I'm interested and in I love what you're saying. And instead of acting and having those intentions in my head, if I'm like saying, oh, no, no one will choose me, then I'm right away, I'm cutting off a lot of those people and those interactions and communication before it happens or before it gets to that point. So that was the very first part. About six months ago, it was a huge struggle. And I started doing my daily affirmations to say that people will choose me and explain the reasons why. And as I was going through my journey and learning more and just learning about the business and learning how business works and how to start up my coaching, I really got a chance to work a lot on my mindset and learn what type of mindset I'm interested in and what actions to take to support to get there. So it has helped minimize a lot, but it has been a huge growing part in the first part of my business. It's mostly been more about me and learning who I am versus getting to the clients and helping them. It was very similar for me too when I was first getting started because I come from a background where people really didn't support me as much as I really wanted them to. So a lot of their blah, blah, blah would be going through my head whenever I came across somebody that says, hey, you can help me with this. Can you help me with that? I would say yes, but at the same time, it's like, why is this person asking me for help? What do they want out of this thing? And then you get a little bit scared about the whole thing. Why are they actually choosing you? So I really empathize with you in that aspect. I really do. Um, the inner critic is a really key component for what we go through with people, you and me both, actually. We have a lot of similars when it comes to that, too. Something that I always, when I, would th I hear something about that, I think this is going to be a little weird. I don't know how you are about it. But um, there is this thing uh, from Star Wars. It's, the, it's an animated thing. It's Yoda. And it's Yoda having to fight his darker self. And he fights and fights. And for some reason, he just cannot defeat his darker self. But once he accepts the darker self as part of who he is as a being, he's able to basically absorb him into himself and accept himself for who he is with that darkness mm -hmm. being part of it. And that's something that when I saw that cartoon, and I, it's funny, it was a cartoon that like made my brain go explode for that particular part. But I took that into myself too, because I used to come from a pretty dark place myself too. But once I accepted that dark place as part of who I am, I was able to control it and not have it yeah. sneak. Now, every once in a while it sneaks up on you, it, it, it happens. But when it does happen, you're able to control it a lot better off than you were before you accepted it. So that's yes, something I, I was thinking about. Yeah. I, uh, when I was talking with my friend, like my previous business partner that was going to do the coaching with me, but we had two different views, we decided to name our inner critic as Snippy. So again, we create a character, we created a cartoon out of it. So that way, then we can be like, okay, this is his thoughts. This is his questions. This is his motive. What am I thinking? So that way we can separate it a little bit. Uh, but that what you mentioned about the dark side is one of the things that I talk about often too, because a lot of times people suppress all the negative stuff and they're like, I shouldn't be feeling this. I shouldn't be angry. I shouldn't be sad. I shouldn't be dealing with these dark emotions or any of those resentments and everything. But I find that there's some, they're there for a reason and they were created for us to learn and grow from them. But if we we're ignoring it and we don't accept it, then we're basically ignoring a part of us. So it's hard to love yourself if you can't love every single part of it and be able to grow from every single part, including the dark side. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. And you make a good point. Sometimes we have to get out of our own way. And that's a part that really struck me too when you were talking in there. I find myself getting out of getting, that's the thoughts that we have. Why are we doing this? Why is this happening to us? Are you good enough? And you're like, of course you're good enough. Somebody's talking to you right now. You wouldn't be doing this right if nobody was talking to you. We think about that. But I think the biggest thing of everything that you talked about just now, imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is the one thing that kept me personally back from doing what I'm doing now. Am I good enough? Who am I to be doing this? I don't have a degree in anything. I just talk to my friends. Yeah. I talk to people on that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Did you have some kind of affirmation or something that you do to get over that imposter syndrome? A lot of it was related to the people choosing me. So again, because if they choose me, then it's because I know and I've attracted them to be able to support them. So it was, I am worthy and people choose me because I am passionate. I am compassion. I have compassion and I'm caring. I'm a resourceful thinker and problem solver. I give positive energy to people. And 
can't remember. There was five different things, but I looked at stuff that I really liked about myself and stuff that I felt was a bit different than a lot of people. And I really worked on uh, focusing on those ones as well as get just getting a chance to be like, okay, it's scary. I'm speaking about stuff and I'm trying to break a bit of the mold for the self-love. So it's not so passive. And I'm trying to challenge some of the thoughts that people think about it. So I know it's going to be a bit harder and you're going to get that resistance. So I'm just like that resistance is good because that can either help me explain better or just learn what direction. So that way it can help with that imposter syndrome and everything. And just knowing that one of the things that I did recently learn too, because my summit was about a seven figure mindset. And I know I'm not there, but I'm like, there's no reason why I can't have that and just already be thinking about it and just be like, what's that person? What's their life like? And just start to visualize that. And I remember having a conversation with my family and I made a comment about something related to big expenses or whatever. And then right away, they're like, especially for the doTERRA essential oils, because again, that's like the network marketing. So that has that unfortunate bad rep, which I think is completely crazy. People who don't understand how it sets up is the ones that talk about it. But they were like, oh, you should just quit because you're never going to get anywhere with it. You should just focus on a regular job and stuff. So that made me realize, I'm like, okay, thank you. I appreciate your opinion. But at the same time, their mindset is different than mine. So I knew I couldn't take what they were saying. And a lot of times with imposter syndrome, we take the advice from everybody around us. And especially if it's validating when our brain wants to be like comfortable. If we're doing something new and we're doing something scary, the second someone tells us what we know, what our old routine was like, we're automatically going to be like, yes, I need to go back to that because this person is saying that. What I've really pushed for the imposter syndrome is to find people that are in the same space or find people with the same idea, same journey and same thoughts and the same mindset that I have now or that I want to have and speak to them about some of the questions or concerns that I have because they're going to be able to respond from a place that I want to go to as opposed to a place that's behind me trying to give me advice and support me in a way that they think is loving, but it's really not helping with that imposter syndrome and that feeling because it's justifying why I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. But I'm like, no, I want to do it. So I found a new person and I'm like, hey, I asked that person the question about the expenses instead, right? Because again, they understand where I'm coming from and they responded with the way that I would, that I want to respond to other people that are going through the self-love and going through the steps and knowing that there's a lot of doubts and struggles and a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. And the people that you surround yourself with are the ones that you want to take into yourself that are positive. Push away the ones that are negative. Push away the thing that people, I mean, your family, so there's not a whole lot you can do about it. But you, you don't want to listen to that so much as the people that want to support you, that want to help you say, yes, this is a great thing. Go do that. Those are the people mm-hmm. you want to hang around. And the top five people that you hang around are the ones that influence you the most. So make sure those five people are positive people that understand what you're doing, understanding how you're going through what you're going through. So that's amazing. It's really rough to have fam- family members that say such negative things to you. I actually feel that when I first got started doing this, nobody thought they could do it. And they said the exact same thing. Just do your job. Go to put your nose to the grindstone. But you know what? That's not for, mm-hmm. that's not for us. That's not for people like yeah. you. And that's not for entrepreneurs because that's not how we want to run our lives. We want to have our, set our mm-hmm. own time, set our own schedules, set our own parameters and goals and things of that nature. So we can be in control of what we do. All right. That's awesome. Awesome. All right. I'm just so excited. That's so great. We have so much in common, Fiona. It's so, so funny. All right. Now, speaking of people, I'm curious as you're going along, if you've ever had somebody that kind of was influenced you to be positive, like we were talking about. Anybody that that keeps you moving forward? Do you have anybody like that in your life that you can talk about? I have a few. The owner of the ranch that I go to for the horses, she's really taught a lot of that. So she does a lot of the tapping and she actually does equine assisted learning. So she uses the horses again to help support people with their mental health or with whatever concerns and issues that they have. So she was a really a positive person. She's I was always one of those ones that was always anxious about stuff and thought everything was a big deal. And I was constantly moving all the time. And she was just like complete opposite. Right. So she really taught me a lot of those things. And she let me because I helped volunteer for her and I helped her with the EAL sessions. She actually let me go through some of them so I can learn from the person's perspective what it's like. So it was very empowering to get that opportunity. And I know for changing the mindset. I went through a challenge that Dan Locke had back in September. And that really made me think about my perspective because he had an ad 
which talked about quality and how important it is. And I realized that's the type of person I am. That's what I've always liked. I really liked quality and value. And I always shied away from that type of stuff. But then I just wanted to embrace it and just be like, I could turn that to my coaching and just to make sure how valuable it is. And that again, led to that more in depth for the self-love and more challenging because as opposed to just being like, oh, I'll teach you how to love yourself, but to be like how to actually take that and just propel yourself forward and just be able to wake up every day being like, okay, I'm practice my self-love for today. I'm ready to move forward and um, help prevent a lot of those big, huge setbacks and challenges. Like when my friend had left um, the business back in October, I sat there being like, what am I going to do? Like everything's changed now. And I gave myself like that half hour to deal with it, go through the emotions. But then I was like, but obviously we were struggling and it wasn't working. So I was like, what did I not like from what we were doing? What would I like now instead? So it really helped have going to that training with Dan Locke really helped put me in the mindset of what I actually wanted. And it really changed my um, perspective on my business and how to improve it. Those negative things happen to us every once in our lives, but it's how we handle those negative things is really what makes us who we are as a person, who we are as a human being. You can either spiral out of control and just, okay, throw your hands up in the air and say, okay, I'm done with this. I'm not going to do this anymore. Or you can make it your own right? Or you could make it whatever you want to make it. You have the capability, you have the knowledge, you just need to go out and actually do it. And that's what you did. Mm -hmm. You actually turned it into something that you really loved, the passion that you had because you wanted to see it thrive. You wanted to see it keep going. That it's helping a lot of other people. So that's amazing. And I had, I'm also in a group on Facebook that I try to help support for mental health and everything because I know it's a struggle and it's really hard. And I had a conversation with one person and we were like, we're, I believe in the law of attraction and I believe with what we think about. If we're thinking more positive, we'll see more of the positive. If we think negative, we see a lot of the negative. So I commented to the person, I'm like, if you look at more positive stuff, then you will see it. So I didn't look say anything about the negative because obviously the negative is still there. We don't want to just ignore it. But at the same time, someone challenged me and they're like, oh, you're basically telling someone it's their fault because they keep thinking of all the bad things. That kind of led into another discussion, which I basically said at any moment in our life, we have the choice to choose to remain a victim or the choice to change and decide to do something that we want to do. Everyone at any point, so you can reset your day, you can do it over, whatever you've had in the past, whatever you have right now, you have the choice to look at it and make the change and make the difference for it, as opposed to being stuck in the same position. Exactly. It just, it goes into, boy, this is so funny. So this goes into like, when you buy a red car, suddenly you see all the red cars on the road, right? Yeah. The one thing that really turned my head into that is after I had my first child, my son, and then suddenly I see kids all over the place, same age as my kid or whatever. (laughs) And and it's a mental thing, really, because now that now it's now that you have the attention of that thing, you're going to see that more often. You're going to attract those things to you. It's I'm not trying to be overly woo woo, but at the same time, it's exactly how that works. So when you're telling somebody, hey, think more positive things will come to you. That's the kind of mentality we need to have, not so much as like the other person was saying, no, that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is putting it out there and attracting those things like a magnet because we're able to notice these positive things now since we're putting more positive things out. Exactly. And we're going to see more of that coming back to us. Fantastic. Love it. Uh, What's the name of the lady that was helping you with the horses? Do you remember? Kelly. Like the owner? So I'd like to publicly say thank you, Kelly, for helping Fiona. Because you really yes. turned her into an amazing person. So thank you. Thank you very much, Kelly. Appreciate you. Now what I'd like to do here is find out a little bit about you in a different way. When do you think you've known you've made it? When you finally get to that one point where you're like, this is exactly where I wanted to be. This is where I was hoping for. What would that look like to you? When the team that I've built for my business can are so empowered that they can do whatever they need to do without necessarily me being there so I can take myself out of the equation and everything will still run smoothly the way it's supposed to and also to take that information and knowledge and pass it along to my son so that he grows up with the right mindset and not like one of scarcity or not one that's worried about stuff so if you don't mind me asking how old your son he's six and a half it's like ah cutie yeah that's awesome my son just turned 17 and I have a 31 year old. So it's a, it's a weird <laughs> situation there, but it's good to be able to pass that along to the younger generation because that's going to be the people that's going to design our future. 
And if, mm-hmm. as long as we're giving those young ones the positive attributes that we're hoping that we can pass on to the next generation, it's just going to make a better life for us in the future. And so on. And I really feel strongly that this is how we're going to change the world is passing on these positive teachings to the younger generation so they can use it to make intelligent decisions, good decisions, mm-hmm. not spur of the moment decisions that just sound good at the particular time. So that's a great, and, that's a great aspiration to have. Yeah, and I find too, again, with a lot of what I've been learning, what I wish I knew when I was younger, but at the same time, knowing my, that, that knowledge about self-love and that knowledge about how important it is and the knowledge about not working hard. And a lot of our mentalities are so different that what we, even 20, 30 years ago, we wouldn't have learned it. We wouldn't have grown up with it. But now having that ability to teach it, I know I really, I know he's six and a half, but I try to work on with him with delegating and planning and time management and just being able to appreciate and understand and do gratitude and really pass on more of those positive ones, as well as being able to be like, here's your money. Let's help you work on managing it. He has to split his money up into the different percentages when he gets it and everything. So I want him. And I know one of the things that Dan had taught to is everyone's afraid to talk about money and they're afraid that it's such a bad thing and you're not supposed to say anything about it because it's just a taboo. So I'm like, well, it's okay to talk about money. And I know a lot of people I talk to, they're going to give me these weird looks when I start saying, hey, money is good kind of thing. So I want to teach my son. So I'm like, hey, look at this. It's easy money. And we have a, like, we've got money that every month I just pile it up on our nightstand. So I'm like, when you go to bed, you're sleeping right beside it. And then when you wake up, it's still there so that he's going to have that ma- mindset that money is always there and it's okay and it's easy and it's good and you can work for it and stuff. So that's one of the biggest things that I want to teach him so that it's not necessarily saying that I he'd have a better life than me, but he would have a better foundation to be able to do whatever he wants to do at that point. That's what I do with my kids, too, because I want them to have the knowledge and the capability that I didn't have when I was their age. And that's just an amazing thing to be able to pass that along to another generation that's coming up. You should definitely take stock of what you do and then, I don't know, write a book about it or something, because that's what we really need to do for, with our future is like, teach these kids. In 10 years time. <laughs> yeah. The positive reinforcements, the things that they need to know. And when I was growing up, here's your allowance. Don't go spend it all in one place. That was pretty much my financial. Right. Piece. Or go to the store, spend it all in candy, come home, or you did one of the opposite, either spent all of it or you saved all of it and you didn't spend any money. And both of those are definitely poor management for money and stuff. So. I remember when he was like three or four, I was going to try to get him to start doing a bit of chores. And I wanted to teach him. And what originally I was going to do was, here's how much you earned from the chores that you did. So I'm going to take 25% for for your rent and then 10% for food. So I was going to take the money back from him so that he can learn to budget and know that bills are a part of life. But again, now we have those jars that Harv Ecker had mentioned with the um, six different ones. So now I've got him to do that on the weekend. So I'll get him. And I was Gave him one for once a month. And I'm like, no, I want him to do it weekly because, again, the more often he does it, the more he'll practice. So I'm hoping that when he actually gets his own job, he'll have that habit already in place. So he'll already be setting it up and separating everything out. Except instead of jars, it'd be like in a bank account. Right. I can imagine if he was like 30 and he had all these jars sitting out. (laughs) Oh, that's my budget. Like all the change. (laughs) That's my long term purchase. You know, my house. There you go. All in quarters. (laughs) That's amazing. I'm really glad you're doing that. That's really what it breaks down to. That's a really good made it moment to have. So awesome. I I understand what you're doing with the holistics and the the oil, essential oils and things like that. But if you were to meet somebody that wants to do a similar entrepreneur adventure as you, what kind of advice would you give them? What steps would you have them take? I would definitely tell them to do self-development and understand that we are our business and the struggles that we have personally are going to show up. And 90% of the time, unless we grew up in a household with the exact same entrepreneurial mindset, we're going to need to find a different group. Because if we grew up in a house where our families and our parents just did the normal jobs and that's what they were interested in, that's what they liked, or that's what they grew up knowing then knowing that you have that different mindset and you want to do something, you really have to break the mold and just be like, I'm going to do it and just push forward and just ignore the advice from people that aren't where you want to be and make sure that you're really working on your development because business, it's definitely so much mindset. I think everyone keeps saying it's like an 80-20%, but I really feel like it's more 90-95% mindset because having the strategies, having the content, knowing the steps you need to take, knowing what you need to do. 
But a lot of times you could say something, but without having that confidence, without having that knowledge or that worth or um, that development, then when you're saying it, you're not saying it the right way. And you're not coming across as someone that you can, they want to believe you and trust you because you don't trust yourself. I think if they put a lot of energy and focus in learning how to work with their inner critic, learning how to say, okay, no, it's fine. Take a back seat. I'm good. I can do this. Or learning how to network. And really collaborate with people that do have that mindset that can be like, yes, you're on the right path or you can tweak it a little bit. I think that's the biggest thing that I would say for everyone. And I like to look at, I don't like, I know sometimes I'll listen to some people and they're like, oh, you're competition. And I'm just like, I don't have any competition because everyone's doing their thing. They're going to attract people that work for them. I'm going to attract people that work for me. And I don't want to be fighting and having that energy around that. I'm just like, this person's doing this, this person's doing that, because I'm different, I'm unique, and I know what I share would be different. And the people coming to me is going to be different and unique. And I have something to learn from every single person that comes to me. So then I'm able to grow and open up that way. But if I look at being competitive all the time, then I feel like I would be more pushing people away or trying to like, here's my results, here's my comparison. But you don't need to compare to anybody else because there's no one else here that's like you with your experience and knowledge and how you present or any of those things. You'd be surprised how many people I come across that don't keep that in mind, that they're their own asset. They're their own capability. They have their own superpower as compared to other people. I, I, we got to just not compare ourselves to other people. We got to compare ourselves to ourselves, so compare ourselves to a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, whatever it happens to be. So we could see the growth that we've had in that amount of time from where we were then to where we are now. And I am my mm-hmm. own competition. I don't like pre- comparing myself to myself. I'll just, I compete with me. I want to see how far I can go and then compare it to what we had before and realize that, hey, I'm beating that old guy from back to, from six months ago. Right, exactly. I actually have a journal that I rate in on a regular basis and it's days in the future. And it's what I visualize and what I plan on. So I've had a couple of days come up and I haven't quite met the same thing. But again, it was because I didn't take the same action that would have led me there. But I like to write that and be like, okay, this is my plan. This is my goal. So let me pretend I'm living that life now. What will it look like and what it would come up? And one of my friends was like, you should publish that once you're done and you're successful. Just see how the letters changed and how you thought about stuff and everything. But I think it's fun just visualizing that person in the future and being like, this is me. This is what... I'm going for. And just, I had one day where I'm like, oh, I'm at a dance class. And I wrote how it was fun doing a dance class. So it's nothing related to the business, but it was just something that I want to do. And I wrote it as if I'm already there doing it. Not everything we do, it has to be entrepreneurial. We can have some fun too and still be and revel in that particular time. Like the other day, uh, it was snowing outside. So I did a video. Hey, look, here's the snow. But like I was introducing the snow to everybody. I I love doing little things like that. One thing that comes across my mind it was from a song but i can't remember exactly who sung it so i have to apologize in that particular part but who's going to stop me when there's no one to stop me but me i always think about that in those type of situations because i'm in my own competition so i got to get out of Mm -hmm. my own way to be able to move on to those next things so nobody's going to stop me but me if that makes any sense (laughs) absolutely Yeah. Like I said, we do bottleneck ourselves quite often. And again, if we just listen or we give up or we say maybe next time or tomorrow, right? So we really definitely are the ones that decide whether our business grows or fails. Yeah. And it really goes into my tagline too. I can, I am, I will, and I'm doing it today. If we don't do things now while we're thinking about it, we tend not to want to do it. It takes a back burner into something else, even though it could have grown into something fantastic for us in our business or even in our personal lives. If we don't do it while we're thinking about it, it's going to take a backseat to everything else. So let's not let that happen as entrepreneurs. For sure. All right. So easy as entrepreneurs. Yeah, it is. It really is. I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of a scenario here, if you don't mind. If I was looking to hire you, say, as a coach or anything along those lines. And I have two other people that want to do the exact same thing as you. They have the same capabilities. They have the same knowledge and that kind of thing. What would set you apart from these other people? Incorporating the essential oils. So I do put that into my program because it had helped me quite a bit. And I know a lot of people know the physical support that essential oils can do with their bodies. But I like to look at the emotional side. So there's oils that can help you with 
doing your uh, boundaries for being able to protect you and repel against negative energies, as well as giving you words to use if you can't verbally put the words into work into place and space. Other ones that help you think more clearly, ones that kind of help reduce the chaos that's in your mind. And almost every oil has some type of emotional component of it. And that's my favorite part. And that's what I like to use and incorporate into my coaching, as well as with the Clifton Strengths, strategy is my number one and arranging is my number two. So I'm very good at being able to be find the strategy and be able to arrange it to support someone because everybody's so unique. And not only are they unique in their preferences or their food or how things act, but their self-care is different. So what I love being around the horses and being able to merchandise, that's going to be completely different from somebody else who's terrified of horses. They're probably going to be more tired and exhausted by the time they're done with that interaction than they would be for me, which would vitalize me. So I like to look at everybody as unique and just learn about them and then see what strategies, how we could tweak it, how we could change it. And really that goes back to the self-awareness is that a lot of them will learn themselves. Like they have to do it themselves. They have to learn who they are because you can't have someone tell you because we're only going to assume because we're not there in your head. We're not there at any given moment. We don't know every one of your experiences in your history. So a lot of the my first week is focused on self-care because, again, most people are so busy that they don't take that time to sit back and just be like, OK, I really got to work on um, the self-care. I got to work on reducing my stress. I got to work on boosting my energy, boosting my productivity, making sure I do it on a like multiple times a day. And then the next category or topic I talk about is self-awareness, because if you cannot take at any moment at any time and day. And be aware of your feelings, your emotions, your energy, or how you're like where you're sitting, what your strengths are, then you're going to struggle with being able to do anything and be able to know exactly what you need at that moment to be able to help yourself. Perfect. You're hired. Okay. So it's really a good way to set yourself apart because you take a different kind of outlook than most people. And then you incorporate things that you're good at, that you like, that you have a good knowledge about, incorporate that in differently than most other people. And I like the fact that you actually ask people or you, you try to get to understand people and how they think and how they feel before moving into something. Because not everybody's going to be a cookie cutter. Okay, if you do this and this, you'll be fine. It's not always like that. You can't be a cookie cutter, especially when it comes to emotion, because everybody's emotions are quite different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's all about their history, their origins, how they grew up, their society, their culture, just about their experience, their parents, a lot of what we bring for us for our values and our thoughts or what our parents had a lot of it just filters through and stuff so we have to take all of that into perspective as well as what people think of self-care and what people think of self-love so you can't force someone to be like oh it's so important to accept yourself but someone might really gravitate to the self-compassion side of it and another person could gravitate to the self-esteem or self-respect and it's nothing wrong with that and it's everything is going to be able to help support them and allow them to move better and be a better person but it's knowing what part's really going to drive them to be able to be more successful. Fantastic. Good stuff. I really like it. I'm going to ask you a very selfish question, if you don't mind. I love this. So if I was like, I'm trying to get into meditation, what I'm having, a, my brain is noisy and I just can't get into it. Yeah, right. I really just can't get myself quiet and my brain quiet enough to be able to actually get into that Zen state. What essential oil or what kind of thing would I be able to use to help me with that? A couple of things. If you really want to work on quieting your brain, I would say, I know doTERRA, they have their adaptive oil, which is really, it gives you that time to think and to be able to not react so quickly. So it gives you that bit of space. A lot of the calming oils, like their balanced lavender, more of the floral ones are more grounding. So that'll help you settle down a little bit more to focus. I use a lot of those and vetiver, especially because that one's a very deep rooted grass. It's like one of the deepest roots. So it's I find any trees, any floral, anything that's close to the ground is very good for relaxing, very grounding. So they would all help you. I like to look at the citruses as something that's going to give you energy and boost because it's closer to the sun. It's higher in the air. But another way I look at it too, like my brain, I don't think I will ever be able to keep it quiet. I try sometimes, but then again, that's more draining to me because I'm like sitting there being like, be quiet. And then I'm like counting off and I'm like, I don't know, stop talking. You've got to be quiet. And then I'm like trying to count and I'm like, counting isn't quiet, whatever the case is. So again, with that whole not being cookie cutters, to me, meditation is whatever works for you at the moment to become present. So my meditation is I'm sitting down and I'm going through my affirmations. I'm going through my, visualizing my goals. I'm visualizing what I want to see in the future, like my perfect day and stuff. Or if I want to be more like do that temp check on my body, I'm like, 
How's my head doing? How's my shoulders? So my mind is constantly thinking, but I'm being more focused on what I wanted to think about. So when I'm doing my affirmations, I'm more present. When I'm doing my body or my breathing, or I'll be like, hey, let's breathe in, let's count, let's breathe out. Then I'm counting again as well. So I'm giving it something to do because I know that's going to help me and that's going to support me as opposed to fighting and trying to be like, just stop talking. Because then I got two or three voices that are saying something then and they'd be like, is it okay to talk now? And I'm like, no, it's not okay to talk now, right? So it's um, a lot more fighting and a lot harder that way. Good. Awesome. Thank you. I'll definitely take that into consideration the next time I get to the essential oils story there. Thank you. This is my favorite question, but I did steal it from another podcast. So sorry, everybody. But what is the one question you wish I would have asked you, but I didn't? I always have somebody that's really ready to answer a particular question. And I never get to ask that question. So what is that question, Fiona? Um, I thought, it, like, when I went through the questions, I was thinking about it. And I couldn't really think of anything that would be interesting. I know one of my hobbies, if you ask what kind of hobbies I'm interested in, what I find really fun um, is I love writing young adult dark fantasy novels. So one of my friends is like, when I was reading it to her, she's just like stepping back. And then she's like, you're a self-love coach who's all about positivity, but yet you're writing a lot of this dark type of material. And I'm like, that's just, again, that's knowing what I like and my strengths and what I enjoy. So I have fun writing that. I'm hoping to get that published. I was working on editing, so it's taken a bit longer to edit, but just be able to write those series and have fun with it and a little bit more on the dark side. I'm going to put you in touch with a guy who I used to work with who writes a dark novel a month. Nice. So he has a lot of the same kind of writing mindset as you do. If I could put you in touch with him, I bet you he can give you some fantastic points. He's been doing it for a couple of years. He's, he does self-publishing, so he doesn't have to worry about any of that other stuff. So his name's Jude. I can't remember his last name, but I do have him on my Facebook. I will definitely have you guys touch base with each other. I'm sure he can help you out awesome. with that. It's fun. I, I was writing one before and I was doing it for more of a younger age group, 16, 17. But then when I started to do my new series, because I kept trying to publish that one, but it was demons in it. A lot of publishers were saying they didn't want to do demons at the moment. But then I realized now that I wanted to make it even darker. So I want to go back and just make it even more crazy and harder and a lot more twists and turns and a lot scarier and stuff. I think it's just, it's fun. It's out of the normal. It's not what you can do every day and stuff like that. And it's nice to just be like, what can they do now? What can they do? And I like a lot of those um, hate to love relationships. So they like, they hate them, they're enemies, and then they learn to embrace themselves and accept them who they are and the person that they're with and just move forward from there. Awesome. Now that you've said it in the podcast, you're going to have to do it. It's out there now. Yep, that's right. Okay. <laughs> that's awesome. It's great to have that outlet. Not everything has to be money and headset. Sometimes you got to have that escape, have that that mm -hmm. extra 20% where you can just be yourself. That's a great thing to have because who knows what could come out of that, right? For sure. For <laughs> it's exciting. This is the time where I like to talk about a six-month goal. So, Fiona, I'd like to know, do you have a six-month goal for yourself and your business? I would like to have more clients because where I'm just starting, I haven't quite gotten my clients yet. I've gotten some people that are like learning, doing bits and pieces, and especially with the self-care guide. But to have a more consistent support for people to be able to impact them and help them see them make a difference in their lives and change and know the benefits of it. Um, as well as I still do my doTERRA essential, um, I'm still for that part. So to grow that business as well and be able to hit one of those, it's a diamond rank, which is like one of those higher top percent ranks that a lot of people don't achieve because they don't put that um, energy and effort into it. I want to be able to do that as well. And I'm because with myself loving corporate, the essential oils, then a lot of the people will become customers for both to help with it. Awesome. Give me a number. How many clients do you think you have? You want to have for yourself in six months? Give me a number. Minimum 50, I think, for sure. Like, clients? Are you sure that many? Yeah, because it's like a one of the, again, because the self-love is so different for everybody. I want to be able to have that group as well. So then they go through the course, go through the program, have that community, build that community, because I know self-love from my perspective. And again, like every single person we can learn something from. So someone else we can learn from them and another person can learn so that we can kind of build and grow that community. So they all support each other and have that mind because it's very easy for one day being like really good and then also just having a rough day and then just being able to reach out to that connection. So do a lot more 
weekly coachings um, to be able to be there, support them, answer their questions, but to be able to build that group really fast where all of a sudden they become the support, they become their own community and they'll be able to answer the questions and then have people who are starting the journey aspire to see the results and the impact that these other people are having. Okay. So what I'm going to do with, I'd like to do with you is in six months, have another interview with you just like this and see if we've accomplished those goals and see what changes have happened in those last six months. Is that okay with you, Fiona? Yeah, that sounds good. It'll be a great way to hold me accountable too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what we're trying to do here is help you a little bit do that. So, all right, this is your time to shine, Fiona. This is your time. I want you to advertise yourself and say how we get a hold of you. And if it's okay with you too, when you have this new, this next thing, what, what do you, it's like a summit or something like that, that you cut that's coming up in the next couple of months. When you have yeah. that ready, I want to put a link in the show notes. So if anybody hears us and they want to join that summit, yeah. we'll have that capability. Is that okay? Yeah, that would be awesome. I'm still working out what I want the next summit to be about. Either I was going to do like a master, a mastery beyond sales pitches. So that way they learn the other parts of the business, not just the sales. Or, but I think I might tailor it to more like high ticket and again, just helping with quality and stuff. So I'm trying to narrow down which of those two topics it will be. Again, help support people, um, especially for network marketing. I find a lot of people, they're like, they're like, everyone's your client, everyone's your customer, reach out to everybody, just offer them a bunch of free stuff. And I'm like, that's not the type of person I am. So that's not the type of person I want to attract to be able to get to come into that company. So I feel like a lot of people who do network marketing, it's, oh, it's a side business, it's a side hustle, but you can treat it like a business. So I wanted to be able to, and if I did that high ticket summit, then I want to be able to say network marketing, these are the exact same tools and systems and stuff you can do for this to be able to grow and build to that business and be able to attract the people that would use the oils, would use the supplements or any of those products to be able to help support themselves and not have to be just chasing after a nickel diming type of thing. So. All right. So this is your and time. Go ahead. Ready, set, go. Right now, mostly Facebook, Fiona dot, or Fiona Redden. My Instagram is Fiona dot Redden. And I have a website, but I haven't created it yet because I wanted to make sure when I get it set up that I'm actually going to be able to use it. So I've been working a lot more on the live launch. So in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have the live launch for my boot camp to start running people through that first couple of weeks and get the feedback really the better. So it's a lot of the better pricing to get their feedback to really make a really good program based on what all their knowledge is too and what works for them and their perspective. Because I know, for example, I said self-care for me, relaxing, a bath is relaxing. So I do that for relaxing. And I was like, yeah, it's more than just baths. And one of my friends who is really good at self-care and self-love is but baths energize her. It gives her creativity and that's where she does a lot of her thinking. And I was just like, I stood, I was humbled because I was like, my perspective was my perspective. It wasn't someone else's. Really getting that chance and that opportunity to grow into that part. So Right now, it's mostly Facebook and Instagram where people can find me. Awesome. So we're going to have that attached to your profile on my website. So if anybody wants to look up Fiona and have that information, it'll be right there with my guest and my guest page on my website, uepodcast.net. Awesome, yeah, absolutely. All right, Scoop Believers. Fiona, thank you very much for being on the Undiscovered Entrepreneur. It's been a real treat. I really enjoy talking to you. You as well. It's been really good and fun and like you said, we are a lot of us very similar in what you were explaining to you. Like, yes, that's awesome, right? <laughs> so it's nice to have uh, someone that, like you said, to connect with and very similar. Fantastic. <laughs> Hopefully, and we'll uh, follow up with you in six months, okay? All right. All right, Sounds school good. believers, thank make you. sure you stay. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure you stay tuned for the wrap up. All right, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, school believers, that was Fiona. What an amazing interview. Love talking to her. She had a lot of great information. She and she it just poured out, just kept going. I was like, I don't want to stop her. She's got so much great things going on. I was pouring out of her like, like a waterfall. So I was like, go for it, go, go. But some great information from Fiona about imposter syndrome, giving yourself grace, self-love, all the things that we all need to be thinking about as entrepreneurs going along in our entrepreneur adventure, make sure that you're taking care of yourself. And just like we said, I think that the theme that we had going here, make sure you take care of yourself so you have the capability of helping other people because nobody's going to be able to, you're not going to be able to help anybody 
if you're not helping yourself. It's just not possible, at least not in a positive way. So let's keep that in mind. Okay, so now a little bit more about me and what I'm doing. Uh, if you haven't heard it already, the second half of the Entrepreneur Olympics talk that I'm putting together is coming up on March 12th. So make sure you go into YouTube, look under Undiscovered Entrepreneur and book your time. Book some time to actually watch this. It's going to be amazing where we talk about the third and the fourth runner in the Entrepreneur Olympics. Also, uh, something amazing has happened over the last week or so. Now, uh, I have been invited to be on a speaking panel uh, starting April, and that's going to be on the third and fourth week of April, May, and June that this is going to be happening. And it's being put on... It's being facilitated by a really good friend of mine named RJ and in his community, the Beacon of Light. So we'll be doing some talking there. If you'd like more information on that, please reach out to me at DJ, reach out to me at DJ Scoop 2021. If you want more information about that, reach out to me on Twitter or X at DJ Scoob 2021. That's S K O O B. Or you can find me anywhere on Linktree, and that's L A N K T R dot E E backslash DJ Scoop. All my contact information is right there. This is going to be amazing. I want to make sure that you're a part of this. Also, some quick personal updates. It looks like I'm having to move again. Uh, not quite preferable, but life happens and we're just going to go with it. So um, if I don't reach out to you right away or very quickly, if you have questions for me, be patient with me. I will return any call. <laughs> I will return any requests, any questions that you have as soon as humanly possible. But kind of bear with me a little bit. The episodes aren't going anywhere. Don't worry about that. Things are just kind of slowed down just a smidge for me personally, but we're going to get through this, okay? And then I really want you to make sure you stay tuned next week for our... Stay tuned next week for a very powerful coaching that I did with RJ, that gentleman I talked about just a few seconds ago. He was amazing, and he learned a lot. I want you to be able to hear what he learned, because maybe you could pick something up on that too. And please, if you have advice, for entrepreneurs, for new entrepreneurs, go to tuepodcast.net backslash advice. Leave me up to five minutes of your best advice to brand new entrepreneurs. And that will definitely be on my podcast. So if you want to be on my podcast, no scheduling necessary, no weird editing or anything like that. Just five minutes of your time to be on my podcast, giving you, giving new entrepreneurs the best advice they have. All right, school believers, thank you for a great episode, and I will see you next week and on Friday for the next Undiscovered Advice. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>